Also with us this morning, former New Mexico Governor Bill Richardson, who is also former U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations. He has been to North Korea on several diplomatic missions. Good to have you with us this morning. Thank you, Erica. Give us an idea, as you look at this, especially having been to the country, what is your biggest concern this morning? Well, uh, the North Korean peninsula is always a tinderbox. My biggest concern is a potential military clash between the North and South, uh, a provocation uh, by the North. Uh, my biggest concern is whether there will be stability in the leadership in North Korea. Uh, things have gotten better. The U.S. is talking to North Korea on food aid, possibly resuming nuclear talks. The North and South have been also talking. So things got a little better in the last few months. The issue is going to be, will there be the succession that Kim Jong-il wanted, his third son? Will the North Korean military commanders accept that? It looks like they will. There's some statements coming out of the Workers' Party, which is the official entity mm -hmm. of North Korea, saying that he is taking over. Nonetheless, uh, there could be power struggles. There could be. There's also some talk that, in fact, uh, it could be uh, Kim Jong-il's brother-in-law, who could be doing a lot of the real ruling from behind the scenes, not necessarily Kim Jong-un, because he's so young and has so much to learn. So how much power would you really see him having if this, if this succession does follow um, the wishes of Kim Jong-il? Well, I can tell you from my knowledge of the leadership there, the leadership, the ones that call the shots will be the North Korean military commanders, uh, not necessarily the civilian leadership. Obviously, the family is powerful, but uh, the fact that Kim Jong-il designated his son, the third son, we know very little about him. We know he went to a Swiss school. He hasn't met with many world leaders. He's obviously inexperienced. The issue is going to be, will the military leadership of North Korea accept that transition now that Kim Jong-il is dead? We, we have to watch this very carefully. I, I think it's important. The White House, I think, is playing it correctly, mm -hmm. playing it cool. Uh, finding ways to uh, see what happens, but also uh, lean in favor of engaging the North Koreans. I've always felt that when we isolated them, it didn't work. Right. Uh, possibly, if things look stable, resume the food aid, humanitarian assistance. Which, of course, is what was under discussion and was, was potentially going to be announced this week. You mentioned one of your fears is, is provocation at this point. North Korea firing a missile, um, which is said to be unrelated, yet it's impossible to ignore that. Is this some sort of statement? That's right. Well, the worry is that this has happened. North Korea did provoke uh, shooting uh, no uh, South Korean civilians, an island, a ship. Uh, there are factions within the North Korean military that might take uh, those steps to assert themselves. But you don't know. What you don't want right now is an escalation in the peninsula. I think South Korea is playing it right, playing it cool. Yes, you go on military alert. But just watch things as they develop and hope that this transition is as stable as possible so that you can resume some kind of dialogue with North Korea. Again, I think it makes sense to engage them mm -hmm. rather than isolate them, but you've got to watch things in the next 48 hours. I think what the North Korean military commanders say in the next day or so is going to be critical. People will be looking at and examining every single word. Governor Bill Richardson, always appreciate your insight. Thank you. Thank you.